ladies and gentlemen, it's the Kate Robbins Show. And here she is, Kate Robbins. Show. Now, tonight is a very special occasion for us because this is our first Royal Command performance. Yes, we are at this very moment waiting for our Royal guest to arrive here at the studios. Now, the boys are outside ready to shake hands. Well, they didn't think they could risk it after the show. <laughs> but very shortly, I hope we'll be going over live with our cameras to the Royal arrival. Now, I bet you're wondering who it is, aren't you? Yeah. Well, it's not Princess Diana, no, she couldn't make it. It's late night shopping at Chelsea Girl tonight. <laughs> and it's not, uh, it's not Prince Edward. He said he'd only attend if he could be in the show. <laughs> and it's not Major Ronald Ferguson. That's a relief. Um, oh, I understand that our royal guest has arrived. Oh, how excited. So we'd better go straight over to our outside cameras. And the princess's car is just arriving, containing the hopeful princess herself, who, of course, shows a great deal of interest in the British television industry. And here she is, a princess who's always been popular with the press, and of course, they've always been popular with her. And now the delightful daughter of the producer makes a presentation and has a few choice words for the princess. <laughs> so now she goes on to meet the cast who have been waiting for this moment for... Ah, and it seems I'll have to wait a little longer. And the princess is now in the form. Thank you. Dear. Yes, young lady, what can I do for you? I'm here as a guest on the Kate Robbins show. Name? <laughs> to be under P, Princess Royal. Princess Royal. Princess Royal. Oh, sorry. There's nothing down here. You wouldn't be one of the coach party from the pub, would you? Sorry, <laughs> not. You be under W, my family name, Windsor. Ah, no, Windsor. Yes, Windsor. Windsor. Windsor, are you? Barbara Windsor. You can go speak. <laughs> oh, just a minute. Come back here. Barbara Windsor's got blonde hair. Oh, well, there seems to be uh, a bit of difficulty uh, getting Her Royal Highness into the studio. But we're going to soldier on, so it's on with the show. <laughs> The land. I'm a real smoothie. I've got two left feet. <laughs> I'm dancing to the rock band. We move together in perfect rhythm. We have Devonte and tiaras in our hair. My steps are nimble. My shoes are platform. I'm having trouble with my underwear. <laughs>
we'll try under Phillips. Phillips? Phillips Electrical? No. Good evening. With us in the studio tonight is a government guinea pig. No, not Nigel Lorison, but John, a victim of secret government tests. He claims that the government has been using him as an experiment by exposing him to dangerous levels of television. John, can you tell us about it? Yes, Patty. Um, well, first they made me sit through endless reruns of The Price is Right. Without proper protection? I'm afraid so, yes. <laughs> what was the effect of this torture? Well, of course, they claimed that they had no idea of the effects of prolonged overexposure to Leslie Crowther or of the price I'd have to pay. <laughs> Which was? 150 pounds? That's the correct price. Oh, yes! Come on down! woo -wee! The price is right! Yeah, 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 yeah! That's incredible. Uh, yes, I thought I was getting better, Patty, but... Well, things are picking up a bit. Uh, last week, I managed to look at the Paul Daniels show. Yes, and, and, and uh, did that affect you? Not a lot. <laughs> but what about your family, John? I mean, they must have been affected by it. Of this, surely. Yes, well, my wife and I do have arguments, but they're not proper arguments. I mean, if she interrupts me, then I just go, beep, 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 beep. I've started, so I'll finish. Surely, John, you must get a rest during the adverts. I'll tell you, Patty, right after this small commercial break. <laughs> and after the break, we'll be looking at what's happening down Coronation Thank you, John. Street. I'll have a uh, pint of cider, please. <gasps> I'm afraid the cider is a little flat tonight, sir. <laughs> what is your name? Anthony Aloysius St. John Hancock. And what religion are you? Well, as I play the organ in the uh, local chapel, I suppose you could put me down as a rhythm Methodist. <laughs> no, I mean, are you a Roman Catholic or Protestant? Well, it's no good being a Catholic round our way. The fish shops are all shut on a Friday. <laughs> have you any physical deformities? No, I have not. <laughs> Mr. Hancock, what do you do for a living? I, madam, am an actor, a thespian, one of the noblest professions of all. No doubt you saw my great performance in the Midsummer Night's Dream. I don't think I did. What? You didn't see my bottom at the Old Vic? <laughs> the bard himself would have been proud of that one, he would. Of course, after that, I was offered Hamlet, you know, but I turned it down. You turned down Hamlet? Oh, yes, I wasn't going to prostitute me profession doing those cheap cigar commercials. <laughs> I'll see if the doctor's ready and for you. Good luck to him. Flipping marvellous, isn't it? You dedicate your whole life to becoming a master of comic timing. You lose all your friends. You wreck yourself with tragic drunken introspection. And all the punters remember you for is a pint that's very nearly an armful. <laughs> and a good mind to give them all a punch up the bracket. Oh, hello, she's back. Right, nurse, I'll have me tea and biscuits, please. But you haven't given a sample yet, Mr. Hancock. A sample? Oh, yes, it's blood you want, isn't it? Go ahead, then. Jab away like a mad thing. You can't hurt a Hancock, you know. We're purely bred. My ancestors came over with William the Conqueror. Just for the day, it was. Bill, I said. Tony Mr. said. Mr. Hancock, it's not blood we want. We're not that type of bank. Well, stone me. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to cash me this cheque, then. No, we're not that type of bank, either. Oh, you're a bottle bank. Well, there's at least three and four back on this lot, mates. Mr. Hancock, we are neither a high street bank, a blood bank, nor a bottle bank. We are here for couples who can't have children because of problems <laughs> with infertility or impotence. Quite right, too. You don't want to take any cheek off them common swords. What we require from you is a sample. Young lady, will you come right out with it? What is it you require a sample of? How oh, dare you? <laughs> I've never been so insulted in all my life. And how much of it do you want? <laughs> Ten cc's? Why, that's very nearly a... Yes, thank you, Mr. Hancock. to interview here today. 
But before I do, can I just remind you that if you'd like the pattern for the top I'm wearing, send a stamped addressed envelope to me here at the studios. Now, my guest is the General Secretary in the USSR, Russia, Mr. Mikhail Gorbachev. Me? I'd have thought you'd have had your own secretary. No, 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 Miss Greenwood, I am merely the interpreter. This is Mikhail Gorbachev, Premier of all the Russians. Uh, Premier Gorbachev respectfully inquires, what is your first question? And uh, could we please mention the roots of the socialist struggle, for example, uh, Marx? Oh, do you have a Marx and Spencer's in Moscow? <laughs> I love the sandwiches. And I always buy my knickers there. <laughs> Van your knicker ski. I'll get to you in a minute, love, OK? Oh. You're a bit tubby, aren't you? Have you tried the Scarsdale diet? No, 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 Mr Gorbachev is not interested in diets. Dirty Van, your larder cars da, da, da. Come in. He would like to discuss uh, the latest five-year plan. Yeah. Is that like the F plan? Lots of fibre and beans. It makes you a bit windy, doesn't it? Mr Greenwood, please. What's it like being in charge of Russia? Uh. Yeah. Yes, a scruggle nice in, in Texas, in yeah, Leningrad. Da, da, da. The struggle is not now merely between East and West, but also the bringing together uh, in harmony within all peoples. Yeah. Uh, President Reagan's recent attempt at the summit... Oh, but to... your wife, you know, she wears a lot of nice clothes, doesn't she? Most Russians can't afford nice clothes, can't they? are a bit scruffy, in fact. Get yeah. Greenwood. Yeah, yeah. Miss Greenwood. It's nice to an interview. This is not an interview. It's a shambles. This is the shambles. It's nine o'clock. You have not mentioned it. It's not Star Wars. It's not mentioned It's Star Wars. not for an arms reduction. You have not even touched on arms reduction. Boris Ofsky. We are here. It's typical of all totalitarian regimes. An alienation of the proletariat which desiccates the dialectic of post-Marxist theory. <laughs> We're not all thick in Liverpool, you know. <laughs> anyway, next week, Islamic fundamentalism and how to make scones. <laughs> Good night. It's the life that I lead. I have a cherished dream. To one day be successful, be related to the Queen. Now Edward is the last one left. I know you'll find this scary But when he's heard my plea He'll marry me He sends us Mary Oh, marry me, Edward Won't you live in Albert Square? It's full of weird and noisy people You'll feel at home there There's much more drama here Than any theatre anywhere you could spare the time. Yeah, well, I'm a bit busy, sir, so if you crack on Yes, with well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. To tell you the truth, Clark, I'm slightly concerned that you may be being somewhat overzealous in your job. Overzealous? In what way, sir? Well, for a start, in the number of tickets you've been giving out. 2,356. 2,356, indeed. And how long have you been with us, Clark? One day. <laughs> One day. Can you explain this excessive ticketing? Well, I'm a very fast handwriter, sir. <laughs> and where did you find them all? Well, the first 231 part of the same facility, sir. Indeed, they were. In a car park. 
the car park to this very building. I can't show any favouritism, sir. All right, then. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Being at a standstill outside a church. They were slowing down the traffic, sir. That's because they were a funeral procession. <laughs> I can't do any favouritism, sir. Clark, you are a megalomaniac. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sorry to have to say this, after you've only been with us for one day, yeah. but you're obviously in the wrong job. Does this mean, sir, that you're giving me the sack? I'm afraid so. And as you're so fond of saying, I can't oh, show no. favouritism. Favouritism. Very good, sir. If I've got to go, sir, can I give you this? It's my last ticket. Don't give it to me, Clark. I've got to, sir. It's for your car. Au <laughs> revoir! <laughs> Maxine here again. I'm just writing off for another television job, and I'm compiling my CV. That stands for Currently Available. <laughs> I started off in show business as a blue coat. Hello, campus! <laughs> I do impressions as well as being a singer dance actress model. <laughs> oh, it was great at the holiday camp. I first discovered the meaning of true love there. Every fortnight for three months. <laughs> and then I had my big break. I was a Bond girl. I was. I had to go around shopping precincts giving out leaflets on premium bonds. <laughs> I also plan to develop my singing career. And this week I've got a record coming out. It's on the Guinness label. <laughs> <laughs> I love all those records they do for charities and tragedies, don't you? A few friends and me have got together to make it. It's called We're Very, Very Sorry. <laughs> Just in case, you never know. Anyway, <gasps> bonjour! Recognize me? Alphonse? I would kiss you on both cheeks, but you are sitting down. <laughs> Do you not remember 20 years ago today? Monique was there. You were here, and I was here. And where was I? You were nowhere like you are today. Croissant! <laughs> you go upstairs together? What, me and him? No! <laughs> you and Monique. And every time you make love, you ring the bell. And I bring you a cognac. I don't remember any of this. After 20 cognacs, who would? <laughs> Shut up! Silent! <laughs> now, here she is. Here you are. And here am I. And where am I? You are nowhere, I keep telling you. <laughs> De cheveux! Not tonight. Don't move. I go get her. Oh! <laughs> If I don't move, it won't be much of a night. <laughs> Shut up. Monique, he is here. Ooh. Do you not remember? No. <laughs> Twenty years ago, he was sitting at that very same table. And now he is a millionaire. Oh, now it comes back to me. Oh, me! George. Oh, uh, George, George, how could I forget it? But when was it? How long is it? One question at a time, please. <laughs> Why? Certainly, monsieur, that same wine you drank on that magical night together. <laughs> it's a little dry. <laughs> I seem to remember there was some music that night. Of course! Music maestro, please! It was so romantic! Oh, mais oui! Mais oui, what? Shut up! <laughs> we met at nine. <laughs> you met at eight. I was on time. No, you were late. <laughs> ah, yes. I remember it well. We danced with friends. You danced alone. A tenor sang. A baritone. Ah, yes. I remember it well. The dazzling April moon. There was no moon that night. And the month was June. June? 
Oh, yes, that's right, buddy. That's right. It warms my heart to know that you remember still the way you're done. Ah, uh, yes. I remember it well. Oh, je t'adore. De Richard. Shut up. <laughs> that courage ride. He walked her home. You lost the glove. She left a comb. Ah, oh, yes, I remember it well. Is that brilliant sky? There was some rain. Those Russian songs. From Sunny Spain. Ah, oh, yes, I remember it well. You wore a gown of gold. She was all in blue. Hush. Am I getting old? <laughs> oh, no. Not you. You were a young and gay, a prince of love in every way. Jogging my memory. Oui. A little tip for the musician, madame? Yes, never leave your trumpet in the toilet. <laughs> Here is my check for you. <laughs> but, monsieur, you have not signed it. I never do. <laughs> ah, yes. I'd completely forgotten. <laughs> 